Hello, I'm Bob Norton, founder and creator of Airtight Management. Welcome to our 101 Video Best Practices series. I know that these proven practices will help you become a better manager and leader. We also know that companies that use even a small fraction of them over time become market leaders and world-class companies in their space. These 101 best practices are just a small sample of over a thousand embedded in the airtight management six systems. Today, we're going to talk about ones used to create high performance teams. Best practice number nine for high performance teams is cultivate a positive atmosphere. The human mind actually accomplishes amazing things when it has a vision and confidence in the ability to execute that vision. Leaders have to project confidence, and people want to follow people who know what they're doing. There's that little bird on, on your shoulder, I like to say, that's whispering in your ear. Do you trust this person, their integrity, their ability to follow them as a leader? Also remember, there's some biological aspects to this. Stress in an environment makes cortisol, a hormone, come out in your body that is designed for fear and actually lowers the productivity in a team, and it even shuts down your immune system, which is why stress can often make people sick. So you don't want to have a high stress or a high pressure environment. By definition, over time, the productivity in that group will, uh, will go down. So overall team culture has to be open, transparent, and positive. You do that by focusing on the future. It doesn't mean you don't do uh, analysis on failures or, or mistakes, but you shouldn't have negativity and finger pointing and dwell on those kinds of things other than is necessary to make sure that those things don't happen again. There's always going to be learning experiences and iteration that's happening in any significant project. Also, any manager that yells or uses intimidation is frankly a bad manager. I, I think that's an absolute statement without many exceptions. Uh, obviously, people might have extra stress in their life or outside problems that make that happen every now and then, uh, and that's you know, reasonable and acceptable. But if a manager uses intimidation and yelling to try to manage people, that person is failing as a manager, and that's bad management. It fights this issue of creating a positive atmosphere. It pushes good people out of the environment and causes all kinds of problem and stress. And people in the team can't focus uh, on the important things and the thinking when that's happening. Uh, there's something you may have heard of called the law of attraction which is really uh, a, now a branch of psychology called positive psychology. And that works in a way that attracts people to you. People want to work with people that are positive, people they trust, people that, uh, that they can have fun with working. You can imagine how that would attract better people and give the team choices of getting better people in it just because it's a positive environment to work in. Of course, the opposite, when there's conflict and friction and arguments, that's going to push good people away from the team. So it becomes sort of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, and the law of attraction can work in a little different way in a, in a team or in a corporate environment, just like it does for an individual. So you want to squash negativity, but that doesn't mean uh, pushing out realism. There's a balance there and judgments that need to be made about the, uh, the level of positivity. I'm not saying, you know, be Pollyanna with rose-colored glasses on all the time. A manager obviously has to be realistic about deadlines and resources and, and what individuals can and can't do. Uh, and what the team can accomplish has to be reasonable. It's okay to push the bounds and to set aggressive goals, but there's limits to that as well. So now when I'm talking about the law of attraction, by the way, you know, I don't mean that foo-foo, you know, new age stuff that says we're all connected with, you know, different frequencies and talking to each other. I mean, just because the power transform on the street is running at 60 hertz and I have something in my body that's going at 60 hertz, it doesn't mean we're having a conversation. I got to tell you, that's just plain silly. But there is real psychology and science behind positive thinking and the law of attraction that can be used in a team environment and a corporate environment. 
I'm Bob Norton for Airtight Management, and we'll see you in the next Best Practices video.